see when it comes out. But my gut feeling is if you're a video blogger, and I hate to say this, I don't think the Mark 6 RX100 is the camera to wait for. Hi, welcome to Creator Answers. And in this one, I'm going to be looking at the specifications for the new Sony RX100 Mark 6. And is it going to be any good as a video blogging camera? Let's find out. So before we get started, if you're new to the channel and if you want to be kept informed of everything I put out, hit that subscribe button, hit that alarm bell, and then you'll be updated of all the stuff. So let's get into it. The Sony Cybershot RX100 Mark VI. Now, for those of you who know, the Sony RX100 range of cameras has been a favorite choice of video bloggers pretty much since they came out. Here's one. This is a, this is a Mark III. Uh, I've got a Mark III and a Mark V. I've had a Mark II as well. These are terrific little cameras. They're compact. You've got a terrific flip screen. You've got a really wide lens on them. They fit in your pocket. Handy little camera mount at the bottom. They're terrific. They shoot in 4K. So the RX100 is a really good little video bloggers camera, but it does have some flaws. No built-in mic jack. It, at 4K resolutions, it gets very, very hot. It can't record for a particularly long length of time, but the image quality is stellar. It's absolutely top-notch. In fact, I would argue that pound for pound, in 1080, there, my pocket little RX100, there's better 1080 recording than the A6500, and that's a significantly bigger investment, you know? So I'm a big fan of the RX100. It's a great grab-and-go pocket camera. Sony have just launched the brand new Mark VI version. Is it worth waiting for? Is it the one to have if you're a video blogger? Well, let's go over the specs. So first of all, you've got a brand new lens, a 24 millimeter to 200 millimeter lens. That is a serious amount of zoom. That is a long, long lens. So that's a good lens if you want to get at stuff that's far away. Very, very good. And 24 millimeter means it's still nice and wide. So you've got a good range of wide angle to zoom, makes it a very, very versatile camera. Fantastic, right? A brand new upgraded Bryon ZX image processor with a front end LSI. So we should have even better image quality, especially when it comes to the autofocus features, superior eye tracking, faster autofocus, all the stuff that Sony are making themselves well known for. That's a big benefit for well everyone still as photographers and video photographers also it's got an enhanced buffer it also means that you can capture a lot more stills in the buffer now because you have an enhanced buffer even though the 24 frames per second remains unchanged from the mark 5 the previous model the new mark 6 can shoot up to 233 images that's pretty impressive compared to only 150 in the mark 5 so that's a lot of continuous shots you now have full width over sampled 4k video which is actually down sampled from 5k 4K video is going to be better than ever in the RX100 Mark VI. And at 4K, you can record at 30p, which is enough for not fancy photography. Although at 1080, you can still go up to 120 frames a second, which makes it a terrific 1080 camera as well. It uses the entire sensor area for 4K video recording. It's going to be great. I haven't seen what it's like, and as soon as I get one, I'm going to do a full review, but that's an impressive specification. You also now have a, a feature called HLD, Hybrid Log Gamma, which basically means we're getting HDR. So the colors are going to be beautiful, no doubt about it. So this is going to be a really, really pretty looking camera. Rather, this camera is going to capture really pretty looking, really good looking video footage. One downside, like most of the earlier models or most of the recent versions of the RX100, there's still no microphone socket, so video enthusiasts are still going to be recording sound probably on a separate microphone. You can record sound on a built in mic, but that's going to be not very good. Finally, we get a touch sensitive screen. That's been lacking on the RX100 models, well, forever. And it's something that its competition from Canon and Panasonic has been able to boast about. Well, now the Sony RX100 is a full touch screen as well, about time too. It's been, you know, infuriating. In fact, a number of times I've used my Canon just because that touch screen is so useful, especially when I just tap stuff on the go for tap focusing. Well, now the Sony has that. But also the range of motion in that tilting screen has been enhanced. So it can now go to 90 degrees down which is going to be very nice for selfies. Finally, we get a brand new menu system. Now, I'm I'm okay with this. I'll be honest, a lot of people didn't like the RX100's menus because they were a little bit confusing, and especially if you're used to some of the newer Sony menus, which are also kind of confusing, but different. It seems as if the new menu system, from what I've seen on the release, is going to be more in line with the newer range of Sony cameras. So that's going to be useful for people who've got other Sony cameras and want to keep everything consistent. There's also a new, improved electronic viewfinder. Now, I'm not quite sure what this is going to do. I've all, I already 
already loved the EVF in the previous models, so I don't know what the new viewfinder is going to do, but I think it means that the optics no longer have to be popped out for use, which you had to do before, which was really frustrating. I don't think that's needed anymore. I'll show you what I mean. So in the previous model, when you wanted to bring out the viewfinder, that pops out. Now that's the flash. Go. It pops up, but you then had to pull out the optics at the back for it to activate. A little bit fiddly, and from what I understand, you no longer have to pull out the optics from the viewfinder, so that'll be quite cool. So then, surely this means the new Mark VI is the best RX100 in every way, right? What's not to want? Well, actually, it's got a big, big problem. If you go right back to that new, brand new 24mm 200 lens, there's a big problem with it. Now, on this model, the M3, and on, I think, all the others, my M5 is the the same, it has an f-stop of 1.8. That means it's a very, very fast shutter. For video blogging, I can set this to aperture priority mode. Now don't worry too much if you don't understand what that means. I'm going to be doing videos on specifically this sort of terminology. But basically what it means is this little pocket camera can give me fantastic blown out soft backgrounds. It's called bokeh. Now the new one has a much slower lens, so you get a lot of zoom, so you can see things far away, but the fastest it gets to now is f 2.8. That is a lot slower than the lens in this. I haven't seen any images using blurred backgrounds on the new RX100 yet. I'm looking for them right now, but I'm going to bet money that it's going to be much harder to do that beautiful portrait shot that you want, which is very popular with video bloggers. I mean, you can see right here, my background is quite soft. I don't think this is going to be possible with the RX100 Mark VI. That's going to be a problem for a lot of people, I'll be honest. I don't give a monkey's about a 200mm zoom. It's occasionally nice to have, but I'm much more interested in doing this close-up photography and videography. So the new RX100 is possibly a small step backwards in that regard. Now if you think that sounds crazy, and I guess it does, also consider this. Sony have never really considered the Mark I and the Mark II and the Mark III up to the Mark VI as making the older models obsolete. The Mark V, well the Mark, I think the Mark III is still on sale. They keep their older models on sale for a long time. It's almost like how with the GH5 or the, the A7 series, they, still, they do like a video version and a still version and a high speed version. It's kind of the same with this. So the while the new Mark VI has got this new, new long telephoto and better video in some regards, I think for a lot of people, you're better off staying with the Mark V. But let's see when it comes out. But my gut feeling is if you're a video blogger, and I hate to say this, I don't think the Mark VI RX100 is the camera to wait for. It's going to be lovely for stills, really nice if you don't care about that blurred background, but I honestly think that that slower lens is going to be a problem for a lot of potential buyers. So that's pretty much it. That is my very quick preview of the new Sony RX100 Mark VI. I'll be giving you a full review when I, when I have a chance to get my hands on one. I'm just going through the specs right here from what Sony have announced. Bottom line, it's going to be a great camera, but I don't think it's the perfect camera for video bloggers just yet. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe, dislike. Love to get your feedback. And my previous video and the next most relevant video are popping up on the screen right here so you can watch those too. Thank you so much and I shall see you in the very next show. Bye!